Why every woman needs estrogen. Yes, estrogen, the hormone most women have been told to run from, could be the single biggest bodyguard against not only your mental health and quality of life, but heart, bones, and brain as well. Does it sound backward to you? Well, you're not alone. In this video, we're gonna cover why this hormone is essential and why the landscape is changing on the importance of this hormone. This video is not me trying to talk anyone into taking hormones. It's simply reviewing accurate medical information because I believe that if you arm yourself with the facts regarding hormones, you will be better prepared to talk with your provider about treatment options. Of key importance, the decision for hormone replacement therapy is all about the right formulation with the right dose at the right time and for the right patient. It's First, let's cover what's going to be called the great misunderstanding. And while some providers give you that look, you know the look when you ask about hormones, the it's just aging, it's normal talk. Well, let's rewind, let's rewind to 2002 when the headlines from the Women's uh, Health Initiative screamed Doctors immediately stopped prescribing hormones to women and every woman suffered. Um, and an entire generation grew up thinking estrogen was basically poison. But as women were suffering, research was taking another look at hormones, including estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. And research has confirmed that hormones, um, what you were born with and have sustained your body throughout life are actually good for you. And this is confirmed by the fact that estrogen receptors are found all over the body, in the brain, the heart, the arteries, the skin, the female tissue. And this next part is key about what happens when estrogen attaches to these receptors. So when estrogen combines with these receptors, it has direct genomic effects, meaning they go to the nucleus of your cells and tells the DNA what to make to help your body function in the best, most efficient way. Not to get as detailed, not to get too detailed as there are some receptors on the membrane that are membrane bound, meaning they don't go to the nucleus, but most go to the nucleus and have direct effects on your genes. So I'll get to the quality of life benefits, the hot flashes, mood changes, sleep wrinkles, all of the symptoms that we know hormones help with, all the ones that make you wanna crawl back in bed every day, you know, the ones that don't, that make you not even wanna be around yourself sometimes. We'll get to all that in a few minutes. But first, we'll take a look at the health benefits that you may not know you're getting and the misconceptions that estrogen causes heart attack, um, stroke, and cancer. So first, the cardiovascular protection. Did you know that heart disease kills more women every year than all cancers combined? Premenopausal women rarely show up in these statistics, largely because they still have estrogen. First, estrogen binds to the cell membrane receptors in the vessels of the heart, the endothelium, to boost nitric oxide production, and this helps keep arteries flexible and blood pressure low. Estrogen, estrogen then binds to the receptors that go into the nucleus of these vessels and activates pathways that improves vasodilation, inhibits plaque development, um, and improves lipid profiles, has antiplatelet effects, has anti-inflammatory effects, and antioxidant effects. Uh, so estrogen helps with all of this, all of which protect against heart disease. And multiple studies have shown that when initiated in women younger than 60 years old or less than 10 years since menopause, estradiol is protective against cardiovascular disease, including heart attack, heart failure, and even death. And actually, when women started hormone replacement between the ages of 50 to 59, they had a 40% lower chance of developing a heart attack. And yes, it's true that some studies have shown women over 60 or over 10 years since the onset of menopause actually increase the risk of heart disease. Um, and I do have women come into my clinic all the time complaining of like significantly bothersome menopausal symptoms and other providers refuse to put them on hormones. So let's take a closer look at these risks. And it doesn't necessarily mean that women over 60 can't take hormones. 
As a matter of fact, according to a recently released result of a meta-analysis, compared with women that had never used hormones or had stopped after the age of 65, um, compared these women with women who um, just used estrogen after the age of 65, they had a lower chance of breast cancer, lung cancer, colorectal cancer, congestive heart failure, venous thrombosis, atrial fibrillation, heart attack, and dementia. But women over 60 do need appropriate counseling and that counseling needs to incorporate how patients can better understand the true risk in terms of absolute, absolute risk and not just percent increase. So for example, what if I told you that the risk of heart disease is 51% higher and women taking hormone replacement greater than 10 years since menopause or greater than 60 years old? As compared to those who started before um, 10 years before menopause, and under 60, and that sounds scary, a 51% increase, right? Let's say it a different way. A more meaningful way to say this is that the absolute risk, and looking at the table, we can see the risk divided in time since menopause. So from 10 to 19 years since the onset of menopause, there's a 45% risk of heart disease, but that equals to an absolute risk of an extra four per 10,000 women developing heart disease. So that sounds a little bit more acceptable than a 49% increase, right? And um, here it's seen that even starting later has uh, more, but still relatively small risk, probably because vascular aging has already occurred. So remember that estrogen receptors in the blood vessels actually help prevent thrombi. So if you don't have this early, um, you'll go ahead and start aging. So let's take a look at stroke now that we've covered heart disease. According to a trial, um, there appears to be no increased risk of venous thromboembolism when estradiol is given transdermally in a patch or with bioidentical progesterone. So the key here is the formulation, transdermal bioidentical estrogen and bioidentical progesterone. And now let's look at the big one, the breast cancer. So the results of the big study, the Women's Health Initiative and a few other studies, based findings with synthetic progesterone, and yes, this makes a huge difference. There was an actual decrease when estrad estradiol was taken, and this can be further seen by a French study with no additional risk seen with breast cancer with the bioidentical progesterone and the bioidentical estrogen estradiol. So what do I tell my patients? Bioidentical hormone replacement isn't shown to cause breast cancer, but if you do develop breast cancer, it can make it potentially grow faster. So that is the reason you must stay up to date with your mammograms, especially if you are on hormone replacement. In addition to hot flashes, poor sleep and moodiness, um, menopause, with menopause, the brain fog kicks in. So like, you know, have you ever walked into a room and forgot why you're there? Declining hormones can make you feel like someone has dimmed the lights in your prefrontal cortex. And this is where the estrogen receptors in your brain come in and why estrogen is the brain's bodyguard. Let's look at how estrogen affects dementia and brain fog. So estrogen increases dendri dendritic spines, or little communication antenna between neurons and boosts acetylcholine and serotonin. So mood and memory stay sharp. And MRI studies track faster verbal memory decline in women who don't undergo hormone therapy compared with the peers who replace their estrogen. And so while studies are a little conflicting with dementia, several studies have shown estrogen um, has what's called a neuroprotective function, meaning it helps protect neurons by helping with DNA repair and regulating cerebral blood flow or blood flow to the brain. And there are studies to suggest that low androgen levels like testosterone is a risk factor for Alzheimer's and replacing can actually help. But this video is on estrogen and not testosterone. That's another video. And moving on to bone health. By five years after the start of menopause, you can lose up to 20% of your skeletal density. The estrogen receptors in your bone stimulate osteoblasts, and these are the cells responsible for bone formation and increased production of osteocalcin. This is a protein that is essential for bone mineralization. And starting estrogen within six years of your final period, the risk of hip fractures drops by 33%. And estrogen is now officially approved by the FDA for osteoporosis prevention. 
So we've gone through the health benefits, the benefits you don't actually feel on a day-to-day basis, but are super important for overall health and longevity. So let's move on to the quality of life scoreboard. And then the symptoms we know estrogen helps with. Hot flashes, night sweats, urogenital symptoms. Genitourinary syndrome of menopause includes dryness, pain, urinary problems, as well as frequent UTIs. And there are both androgen and estrogen receptors that are affected. And as far as estrogen goes, replacement, especially with a topical local treatment, can reverse atrophy, increase blood flow, improve elasticity, normalize pH, and thicken tissue. The localized estrogen is generally not systemically absorbed, and there's actually a new push to remove all black box labels from its use. Moving on to hot flashes, you know, the profuse sweating, peripheral vasodilation, feelings of intense internal heat, all from the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus is very deep in the middle of your brain, and it's your body's thermostat, keeping your core temperature locked within a half degree. And it's full of estrogen receptors. When estrogen starts to decline, small external changes like stress, a warm sweater, maybe even a hot cup of coffee can set off what feels like a five alarm, so- five alarm fire inside of your body. And the brain effects don't stop there. It also affects sleep. So sleep disturbance is one of the most common and debilitating symptoms experienced by women in menopause. And yes, it can be related to night sweats, but also as discussed, there's estrogen receptors directly in your brain on the neurons in the hypothalamus. And they not only control temperature, but also help regulate the circadian regulation of the sleep-wake cycle. So it all goes together. Of note, progesterone is also known to play a huge role in sleep through GABA's system, but again, this is on estrogen, so there'll be more on that in the progesterone video. Mood, um, we all know estrogen plays a vital role in producing um, and helping mood. It produces neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine, and these shifts lead to irritability, anxiety, sadness, all of which are made worse by not sleeping. So some quality of life issues, though, you might not be aware that estrogen has effects is metabolism and skin. So collagen dives 30% in the first five years after menopause, and estrogen can help slow this slide a little bit. It boosts hydration, it boosts thickness. Estrogen deficiency can also affect insulin sensitivity, with replacement potentially helping with some weight around the midsection, midsection and some some studies have shown that women on systemic estradiol kept a two centimeter smaller weight waist after 12 months i know it's a small number but a big genes victory right Um, hair follicles also love estrogen estrogen lengthens the growth phase so strands stick around longer and remember the key for all of this is the right person the right dose the right time and the right formulation so I've already touched on most of, most of that, but the sweet spot is where you'll have the most ven- benefit and it will be received within 10 years of menopause or before the age of 60, and that's before your arteries have time to harden. The formulation is recommended is transdermal estradiol. This bypasses the liver and does not affect clotting factors. Um, and it needs to be bioidentical. There are also bioidentical pills, but these do potentially increase the clotting factors. Um, there's pellets and creams also. And of note, again, progesterone be, will be covered in a different video, but you must have be on progesterone if you have a uterus and are taking estrogen. Must, this is a must. Okay, moving on to the right person, you need to be cognizant that if you are in a severe risk factor class, if you have a history of breast cancer or a BRCA positive, estrogen will not be the correct choice for you. And just for quick comparison, um, again, there are patches and that's actually recommended. Um, They have a steady level, lowest clotting risk, change once or twice weekly. Gels are invisible, but you have to do it daily. Um, Flexible not reliably absorbed, and you have to keep this away from kids. 
pills, it's the cheapest. It's a daily routine. There is a small increased risk in the clotting factors. There are subcutaneous pellets. They are expensive. They, you don't have to remember them daily. They can have erratic absorption, um, and this is true for the testosterone also. And then there is the localized ultra low dose therapy. Um, it won't help with hot flashes, um, but rescue uh, does help with elasticity and dryness. So in conclusion, menopause is inevitable. Misery is optional. Estrogen isn't a magic youth potion. It's a maintenance hormone that you've always made Arm yourself with evidence and you can turn the second half of your life into the best.